Okay, so this is section 1.5, graphs and graphing utilities. Um, we're going to be using our graphing calculator, so you'll need your TI-84 out right now with you. Um, I'm going to start now talking about the standard viewing window. So your standard viewing window is represented with interval notation here. So make sure your x interval comes first preceded by your y interval here. Um, but it shows the range that your x runs. So your x axis here is going to run from negative 10, minimum of negative 10, to an x maximum of 10. And this third number here in your interval is going to represent the scale. So in other words, the tick marks um, represent here, in each case, one unit. Um, the same is repeated now for the y, so we're going from negative 10 to 10 with a unit of 1 um, for our y axis. So here is a calculator. I just want to show you. You're going to hit zoom and then 6, and that'll bring up your standard viewing window. And you can see here uh, that for both x and y axis, our scale is from negative 10 to 10, and each uh, tick mark represents a unit of 1. So today's lesson is all about finding um, x and y intercepts. We're going to do this algebraically, and we're also going to approximate using our calculator. So just a quick review of x-intercepts. Um, we can call them roots. We can also call them zeros. Um, but we, it's important to know that we always have a y-coordinate of 0. So the y-value is always going to equal 0 um, when we find an x-intercept. So that's, of course, where the graph of a function crosses the x-axis. So in this case, we have three roots here. I'm sorry, four roots. I drew it with four roots. Um, and each one of those here has a coordinate, a y-coordinate of 0. Now, a y-intercept, um, a function is only, only going to have one y-intercept, um, but sometimes it's denoted as the initial value. It's important to realize here that the x-coordinate in your y-intercept will always have a value of 0. Okay, so question number one here asks us to plot the function y equals 3x cubed minus 2x squared. In um, first, the given window is going to be the standard window, and we're going to ask how many roots we have. So let's take a look here. Um, so I go ahead and um, enter that into your calculator into the y equals. So right now, I'm going to hit graph, and I should be in the standard window. And if you're not, you can hit zoom standard here. So here comes my graph now. From the looks of it, you can't really tell how many uh, roots you have. So the view screen right here is is very poor. You can't really see much. So um, right now it's too hard to tell. So we're going to go back to this and we want to now change our window. So we're going to hit window here. So go ahead now and change um, your window to the appropriate window. So now that we want to graph our function, let's hit graph. And as it appears, you're going to see now that you have a much clearer idea of how many roots you have. So let's take a look at uh, this graph. So here I've got a screenshot. Now, you can clearly see you're going to have three roots. So as this function increases here, it hits zero, it comes back down. So it never actually crosses the x-axis. So we actually have a double root here. Okay. We now have a third root over here, and it's somewhere in between, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, six and seven tenths. Okay, so this root here is in between 6 and 7 tenths, so we can kind of approximate that. Now if we want to get an exact, um, or an approximate, a better approximation, we can use our calculator to do that. So let's go back to our calculator, and I'm going to hit second, calc, and I'm going to hit zero. We're trying to find a zero of the function. So it's going to ask me to trace, so let's trace over. Let's go all the way to the right and find that one. Hit enter, enter again. And we don't really have to guess, just hit enter one more time. And we have a zero pretty much where we said between six and seven tenths, so about two thirds, right? Looks like our zero is at two thirds. Now let's find the other zero. Do that again, second calc, zero. And let's go to the left. hit enter, scroll to the right, to the right bound, hit enter. So we can kind of guess that it looks like it's at zero, but let's try to verify this as best we can. And hit enter. And it says no sign change. So we weren't able to get a left bound, right bound, because it, it hits the graph and comes back down. So we're going to get a, an error message. So let's try to look at this now algebraically. Okay, so we know that for any x-intercept, the y is 0. 
So I'm going to take my function and I'm going to plug in now y is 0. And I'm going to solve for x. So if you look at this, you can actually factor out an x squared. So if we factor out x squared, we're left with 3x minus 2. Now solving using zero product property, we have x squared equals 0, therefore x equals 0. It's actually x equals 0 twice. Remember, that's our double root. You can also rewrite this as x times x times 3x minus 2, in case you're questioning why it's a double root here. It's equals 0. And you, so you still get two separate solutions here for x equals 0. Now, the uh, third root here is going to be 2 thirds. So here are our exact algebraic roots. So 0, 0, and 2 thirds are all of our roots. Okay, so problem number 2 is asking us also to find the exact and the approximate roots for this new function. So go ahead in your calculator, enter in that new function, and then graph. Now, our graph is going to be pretty limited because we have um, a pretty uh, small view screen right now. Our graph actually looks like it's a parabola and that should kind of set off an alarm in your head that your view screen is too small because our, our function was a cubic function so it really shouldn't look like a parabola. So I'm going to go back and hit zoom standard. So it's going to take a second for mine to come up. So as it graphs, now I can get a much better idea of what this function looks like and I can see that I have three distinct roots. So I'm going to let you guys go through and practice finding on your calculator. Um, remember, hit second, and then above the trace button, second calc, and find your zeros here. So those are only going to give you approximate um, decimal approximations here. I want to find the exact roots here algebraically. So algebraically, let's check. Remember, for an x-intercept, we know that y equals 0. So I'm going to plug in 0 for the y value and I'm going to factor. Now I can take out a GCF here of negative 2x. So if I pull out negative 2x, I'm left with x squared minus 2x minus 2. Now this is going to give me 1, 0 at x equals 0. This, however, is not factorable. So because it's not factorable, you're going to use the quadratic formula here, and you'll be able to find your other two roots. You'll be able to find exact um, roots. So please go ahead, do that, check with your answer key. I want you to find approximate with your calculator, and I want you to find exact with um, algebra. So you're gonna use the quadratic formula. Oops, sorry, using your calculator. Okay, so go ahead, pause the video, and do that, please. Okay, go ahead and turn over and go to problem number three. Um, we're going to estimate from our graph um, in our calculator, and we're also going to find intercepts. I want to actually find x and y intercepts here um, for this. Okay, so the first thing I want to do, if I can, I can't really put this into my calculator unless I solve for y first. So let's go ahead, and we're going to solve for y. If you want to pause it here, you can. Um, I'm going to do the work as well, but maybe you should try ahead of time and see if you can um, find the correct answer. So. Let's move, since we're trying to get the y by itself, let's move the x cubed term over to the other side. Let's go ahead now and factor out that y. Okay. Let's divide out that x minus x squared term. And then I'm actually going to rewrite this as x times 1 minus x. Okay, so now you're ready to put that into your calculator. So go ahead and plug that into your calculator. Um, just be really careful when you are plugging that in because it's divided by that entire quantity. So it might actually make sense to keep it as x squared minus, um, or x minus x squared. Um, but I did separate it and I just made sure I put um, double parentheses around there. Okay, now when I go to graph this, uh, the graph isn't great um, because I can't really see what's happening in between, you know, 0 and 1 here. I kind of have a good idea. If you know anything about asymptotes, if you remember anything about asymptotes, you kind of should already know what to expect here, but let's say you didn't. Um, you can't really tell if there's any y-intercepts in this graph. You can see one uh, root, so you can see one x-intercept here, but let's go ahead and zoom out. So zoom 3 here is going to let me zoom out and hit enter, so it'll let you zoom out. So this actually looks a little bit messier than my last one, right? I can't really tell much of what's going on here. So I'm going to go to back to zoom standard. 
So you guys can go ahead and approximate that one root uh, that you see, the x-intercept, and then we'll work on trying to find both x and y-intercepts algebraically. So go ahead, pause, and then we'll, we'll come back and do that, both x and y-intercepts algebraically. Okay, so I want to find x-intercepts here. So I'm going to set my function equal to zero because I know for every x-intercept y equals zero. So I'm repeating this a lot because you got to get it in your head um, whenever you're trying to find an x-intercept just set y equal to zero. So we do that and we're gonna solve now. So I'm gonna multiply to get this out of the denominator, right? I don't want this in the denominator so I'm gonna multiply on both sides by that and I actually end up with zero still, right? Zero on the left side equaling negative x cubed plus four. So if I add the x cubed over to the other side and I take the cube root of both sides I end up with x equaling the cube root of 4 so this is my exact answer okay so you should have also an approximation and that was that one root that we saw now for the y-intercept we know that for every y-intercept x equals 0 so I now set every part um, every variable there equal to 0 for x so I plug in, and actually let's use the factored expression, x times 1 minus x. So I plug in 0, I get negative 0 plus 4 divided by 0 times 1. Now, the denominator here is going to equal 0, so this expression is actually undefined. Because it's undefined, we just verified that there is no y-intercept. Okay, the last question in this lesson is uh, number 4 here. It asks us to use the graph to estimate each of these values. Now, of course, you could always use a calculator to figure out, you know, the cube root of 2. But this is in case, you know, you don't have a calculator. You're just given a graph. We want you to take a look at this graph and be able to read it. Now, this is the uh, function y equals the cube root of x, okay? So if you look at your scale here, um, we're going in increments of 1 for the, uh, the x-axis. Now, on our y-axis, though, each tick mark here is represented by about, looks like 0.2, right? So there's one, two, three, four, five ticks in between. So we're going to say that's 0.2. So every increment here is uh, a two tenths. Now for this first part, so the cube root of two, I'm going to go to where that means basically that x equals two, right? So let's look at two. X equals two. We're going to go up, and that's right here on the graph. So we're going to estimate. That looks like it's in between 0.2 and 0.4, not quite 0.3, right? So, I don't know, let's say that it, that's approximately 1.27. So, go ahead. Um, I'd like you guys to uh, try the cube root of 3. I'm not going to do the cube root of 6 with you. Even though the cube root of 6 does not appear on this graph, I'm going to give you a hint. Just use these values here to try to approximate the cube root of 6. If you want, you can go ahead and use a calculator also, just to see how close you are to um, that actual value. So to recap, in this lesson, what we covered um, was with using your graphing calculator and algebra, we try to find um, exact and approximate intercepts. Um, we worked on x and y intercepts. So the main idea here is when you're algebraically solving for an x or a y intercept, when it's an x intercept, set it equal to y, y equal to 0. And when it's a y intercept, set x equal to 0.